All right, so here's section uh, section one from chapter four, and what we want to do is we're going to start talking about absolute values, absolute max values, absolute min values, and an absolute max, an absolute max is the uh, largest y value on a graph. Largest y value over an interval over an interval. Okay. An absolute min is the smallest y value over an interval. Okay, so if we're going to look at, let's say we're going to look at the graphs of y equals sine x and cosine x. Well, let's start with um, sine x. It's it's red. The sine the sine x is red, not cosine x. The so sine x is red, and and so when we when we look at that guy, what we're going to see is that we have an absolute min and an absolute max. Okay, and if we look at the cosine, we're going to see that we have two minimums, two absolute mins. and one max. Okay, so these are absolute mins and absolute max, and and we're looking on this guy. The interval that we're looking on happens to be the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And the minimum, the minimum value for our, our sine function is negative 1. The maximum value for our sine function is 1. And then on the flip side, if we look at our cosine function, our minimum value over the same interval, the minimum is zero in two places, and the maximum is one. And so what we learn from this is that you can get a minimum or a maximum at endpoints or interior points. And so our endpoints are where we run into our, the, our interval limit. Okay, so basically this entire section is going to be looking at whether we have maximums or minimums and where they occur. Okay, so some other stuff that's, uh, that we're going to notice in this section. Um, let's just take some random graph that looks like this. And I don't know what function this is. It doesn't matter. But uh, it looks like this. Actually, let's even back this up just a little bit more to here. So what we've what we've got is an interval from A to B. Okay. So we're going to look at this guy on the interval from A to B. And the question then is, what's going on? Well, here on the very far left-hand side, on the end point, we have what's called an absolute min. And the reason it's an absolute min is if you look, the whole graph should be a little bit higher than this guy right here. Okay? So we've got an absolute min at A. An absolute min is also a local min. Okay. Then if we look a little bit further into our problem, we're going to get this point right here. And this is a local max. It's a local max. And and it will say it occurs at some point inside our graph at some point C. Okay. Then we've 
then we've got in here right right in here a local men and again this local men occurs at some point D and then keep looking keep looking keep checking we have up here an absolute max it is the highest point on the graph the highest point on the graph it's an absolute max and we'll say that this occurs at some point E and then the very last thing to look at is another local min and this occurs at the end point okay okay so where does this lead to well if we know where our absolute maximums and minimums are and we know the kind of graph that we're dealing with then what we can do is we can get what's we can get our local extreme values in other words we can get those values where we have maxes and mins local extremes these would be your maxes and mins and they occur where the derivative of your function at whatever point is equal to zero okay the other thing that we could get is that the the derivative at a specific point does not exist okay this is what we're interested in and and when we find where the derivative doesn't exist or where we find where the derivative is equal to zero these are called critical points really important things happen at these points so let's see exactly how this would work let's take some function like f of x equals uh, whoa, x to the two-thirds and I tell you to look on the interval from two negative two to three and find max and min values okay so what we need to do is take the derivative f prime of x is equal to two-thirds x to the negative one-third power okay this is the same thing as two over three cube roots of x so the question then is where does the derivative equal zero or where does the derivative not exist and the derivative on this guy doesn't exist when x equals zero okay f prime at zero does not exist okay so what does that mean this means that when x equals zero we have a max or a min okay and so th that's 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 all there is to it and it's really interesting well what value do we have just take this guy and put it back into your original equation so when you're trying to find that specific point for max or min once you find the value in the derivative that doesn't exist where is zero you just plug it back into the original equation so we're going to look at f at well not f at three f at zero which is zero to the two-thirds power which is zero so if we were to graph x to the two-thirds at the zero we would be at the point zero zero okay so this is a maximum or a minimum the other place to check are the endpoints we'll check the endpoints now the endpoints for this guy are given to us in our setup the endpoints are right here and they are the points we got to we've got to check f of negative 2 
and f of 3. So what are we doing? We're doing negative 2 to the 2 thirds power and we're doing 3 to the 2 thirds power. Well, what is this going to be equal to? This is actually going to be equal to, uh, you know, the, the cube root of negative 2 squared. This guy is going to be equal to the cube root of 3 squared. And so what you're going to end up with is the cube root of 4. And what we're going to end up over here with is the cube root of 9. Well, guess what? These are maximum, these, these, this is a max y. It's larger than this y value right here. So this is going to be my absolute min. And these two guys are going to be my maximums. And whichever one of these is taller is my absolute max. Okay. And that's, that's all you do on these guys. You're just going to take that derivative set the derivative equal to zero and find that x value. All right, here's another uh, problem that we can look at. Say we've got f of x equals uh, one over the square root of four minus x squared. And I ask you for the extreme values. So we're going to look for maxes or mins And how do you do that? Take the derivative, set equal to zero, solve. Okay, and this will give us the value of x to check in our original problem. So how do we do that? Well, I don't like to work with quotients if I don't have to. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. Well, what's my derivative? The derivative is, is negative 1 half times 4 minus x squared to the negative 3 halves times negative 2x. Okay, we've got a little bit of a chain rule that's going on here. Uh, this reduces down to the 2's will cancel, the negatives cancel, and this will reduce down to x over 4 minus x squared to the 3 halves power. Okay? And so what we're looking for then is where 4 minus x squared is equal to 0. Uh, and so uh, or uh, where this guy on top is equal to zero. Those are the two places that we're interested in. All right, so four minus x squared equals zero when four equals x squared. So when x is equal to two, that's one of my possible, that's a critical point right here. Here's a critical point. The other one is just to set the top equal to zero, and this this would be my my top equal to zero would just be let x equal zero, and that's that's my green part. That's my top equal to zero, and so these are the two values uh, that I'm interested in. Well, the drawback here is in my original function. I can only work with values of 2. I can't work with 2 because that gives me 0 in the denominator. And I can't work with negative 2. That gives me 0 in the denominator. So my, my interval on this guy becomes the open interval from negative 2 to 2. I cannot use endpoints. They are not included. No endpoints allowed. Okay? So automatically now, once I find my derivative and I look at this guy, I cannot use my x equals 2 part. The only one that I'll be able to use 
is my x equals 0 part. That's the only number in the domain, in the interval, that I can use. And so what do I do? I check it in my original function. f of 0 is 1 over the square root of 4 minus 0 squared, which is 1 half. And this then uh, is going to be my extreme value. It's my extreme value. And in this case, it is a uh, minimum. And if you look at a graph, you'll be able to tell uh, what, what, whether it's a minimum or a maximum. So this is my extreme value, and it occurs at the point 0, 1 half. So what are we doing? We're going to find the derivative. We're going to find the derivative and set the derivative equal to 0, or find where the derivative does not exist. And we're going to input, take those values for x and put them into our original equation. Okay?